Hello again, everybody. Welcome to USA Wrestling Weekly. I'm Scott Casper. Let's take a look at what's trending from USA Wrestling, the national governing body of our sport. Now several weeks removed from the 2013 World Championships, fans from around the world are still talking about the performance of one particular star, Jordan Burroughs. You remember he captured his third straight World or Olympic gold medal just one month after breaking his ankle in training. It was truly a remarkable and memorable performance. Jordan captured the world title at 163 pounds by winning five straight bouts, outscoring his opponent by an amazing score of 34 to 3. In the finals bout, he defeated Iran's Akbar Izar Inkole by a 4-0 margin. In honor of his performance, the U.S. Olympic Committee has announced that Burroughs has been selected as the USOC Male Athlete of the Month for September. Well, Burroughs has run his undefeated record now to 65-0 on the senior level, joining John Smith as the only American to string three straight World or Olympic gold medals together. Smith's run was for six straight years from 87 through 92. Placing second in the men's vault was para-triathlete Aaron Scheides, while cycling's Connor Fields claimed third. Women's freestyle star Adeline Gray placed third in the voting for the USOC Female Athlete of the Month. She won a bronze medal at 158 pounds at the Worlds in Budapest. It was her third straight medal at the World Championship level to go along with a bronze medal in 2011 and in a beautiful gold medal she won in 2012. Gray moved up a weight class this year. Paratriathlete Megan Fisher placed first after winning her third world championship title. And tennis star Serena Williams placed second in the women's vote. Well, the U.S. women's rowing team won its eighth consecutive world title at the 2013 World Rowing Championships that were held in South Korea. They won the Team of the Month honors for that performance. Congratulations to Jordan and Adeline, our wrestlers, on being recognized for their achievements by the United States Olympic Committee. Well, this past week, the International Federation, FILA, conducted its final World Championships event of the year, the Veterans World Championships in Sarajevo, Bosnia. This event features athletes 35 years old and above and is contested in seven different age groups. Now, the United States always sends a large team to the event, and the effort paid off in a big way at this year's uh, championships, with Team USA bringing home 27 medals in total, including six gold, from the two Olympic styles. Now, we start our coverage with men's freestyle. Day one was the most successful of the week for the U.S. with three individual champs and a total of nine medal winners. Wow. Claiming gold medals for the United States on day one, Michael Schick of Florida in Division B at 185 pounds, Steve Turgeon of Connecticut in Division D at 127, and Shirzad Amadi of Connecticut in Division E at 138. For Amadi, it was his ninth career Veterans World title, the most of any American in history. Schick and Turgeon won gold medals for the second straight year at the Veterans Worlds. Day two in freestyle saw the crowning of yet another champ for the U.S., James Kasser. He's of Ohio, by the way. He did so at 138 pounds in Division D. Kasser won a five-athlete round robin for the gold. It was his third career Veterans World title. On the day, four Americans climbed the podium for a medal. Nice job there. Day three featured both the young and oldest, and the United States claimed two golds, one in each division. Overall, the USA won five medals on day three. Claiming his first Veterans World title, Division A champ Jason Goldman of New York at 127. Goldman won three bouts, including wins over two Russians, to claim the title. Later in the week, Goldman claimed a silver medal in Greco-Roman and was named the Matt.com Wrestler of the Week for his outstanding performance. Also earning a gold medal in Division G for athletes 65 years and older was Terry Harris. Remember Terry Harris? Illinois. 167 pounds. Harris won a three-athlete round robin for the title and has now won a gold, silver, and bronze at the veterans during the last three years. We go to Greco-Roman. The U.S. added one gold medal there, and it happened on the last day in the very tough discipline. Mohamed Tahiri of Pennsylvania won a gold medal at 167 pounds in Division G. He scored a pin over an opponent from Turkey in the finals bout. Over the course of three days of Greco-Roman action, the United States came home with a total of nine medals. Special thanks to international photographer Robert Whitman for sharing his images from the veteran worlds. Let's take a look at the 27 medals won by the U.S. We'll do it on a roll.
Stay tuned, there's more USA Wrestling coming up next. has been there. They've been the lifeblood of, uh, of the sport. Uh, it's been a long time and they've been at the top of the game every year forever. And I'll tell you what, now that I think about it, maybe that's where I've gotten my inspiration because, uh, you know, I, I always want to be in the top of my game in wrestling and I think that's where ASICS is and wants to be as well. Hi, I'm Wayne Boyd, Director of Operations and Development for Titan Mercury Wrestling Club. The club was founded to help wrestling worldwide, especially at our senior level, of course at the collegiate level, and the high school level. But the most important level for Titan Mercury Wrestling Club is the kids level. And these are some of the guys today that will be tomorrow's Olympic champions. Let's hear it, guys. Titan Mercury! That's Titan Mercury Wrestling Club, San Marino, California. Well, today marks the start of a brand new international wrestling season. Athletes from our sport will be in competition somewhere in the world all 12 months of the year. As we speak, the U.S. currently has teams overseas for competition. We start with men's freestyle. Team USA was represented at the Dmitry Korkin International in Yakutsk, Russia. It's part of the Siberian region of the nation. The top two U.S. performances came at 121 pounds, where the Americans had two athletes earn fifth. Young stars Frank Pirelli and Kyle Hutter were the standouts. You remember Pirelli for his college days and his success at Cornell, and Hutter for his career at Old Dominion. Both athletes had solid 3-2 records in the tournament, falling in the bronze medal round. Pirelli lost his medal match to an athlete from Iran, while Hutter fell at the hands of a Russian. The rest of the U.S. team is made up of young athletes who are just starting to make their mark in freestyle. None were able to qualify for a medal bout, but their heart was surely in the right place. The week before, the U.S. Olympic Education Center Greco-Roman team, which now trains at Northern Michigan, attended the Eduardo Campbell International Cup in Panama City, Panama. This group of college wrestlers had a strong effort, winning six medals, including three champs. Gold medals went to Alex Sancho of Florida at 145 and Zach Nielsen of Minnesota at 185. They were joined by Parker Betts of Minnesota at heavyweight. Now, the three U.S. silver medalists included Alec Noah of Illinois at 121, Joy Denova of Georgia at 132, and Tanner Andrews of Illinois at 163. All in all, Team USA came home with the team title. Nice job. Scoring 57 points edging out the Panamanian All-Star team by two points. The USOEC also participated in training while in Panama. Now more U.S. teams are scheduled to compete overseas this fall. Of course, we'll keep you updated and posted on future episodes. Well, last week we interviewed Mitch Hull. He served 20 years as National Team Director for USA Wrestling. Hull has now moved on to his brand new position as Executive Director of the Wisconsin Regional Training Center. Moving forward, USA Wrestling has made changes in the National Team's department structure, which is designed to help move the program to new levels of success. Associate Executive Director for Programs and Strategy, Les Gutches, will assume an increased role in his assignment of overseeing national teams, directing additional time to the administration of those programs. Now, in order to provide support in the key areas of performance and operations, USA Wrestling will split these areas between two national team managers. Cody Bickley, who's headed the National Coaches Education Program for the last four years, will now provide support as the national team's high performance manager. Prior to joining USA Wrestling, Bickley had experience in the College Athletic Administration area at Fort Hayes State, where he served as the wrestling coach for more than a decade. Bickley talked about his brand new role and the opportunities it provides. We as, as, a, as a country take, a, like I said, take a lot of pride 
uh, in this sport and uh, especially this organization and that's what we're going to do moving forward we're going to we're going to put in the time we're going to put in the effort and we're going to make sure that uh, you know people people can succeed Jamie McNabb, who's been working in the National Teams Department for more than a decade, will become the new USA Wrestling Ops Manager. Her experience working with all three national teams, as well as her master's degree in sports administration, will help her in her new role. I'm excited about the opportunity. I'm excited about the restructure. I'm looking forward to working with Les and Cody. I think everything is going to be a lot more streamlined and we're going to be a lot more efficient in helping athletes and in the number of athletes that we can help I think we can, we'll be able to do a lot more. Both Bickley and McNabb will report to Gutches and both will supervise national teams coordinators and interns who work with the coaches and individual teams on a daily basis. With Bickley leaving his coaches education post, USA Wrestling has launched a brand new national search for new manager of coaches education. Les Gutches talked to us about the exciting changes in the management structure of our national teams. When we step back and took a look at it, uh, we do a lot in the, the areas of high performance and operations, and it just made sense to, to hire a person with a specialized skill set in, in each of those uh, spots. Our wrestling news will continue on the other side of the break. We'll be right back. Wrestlers, are you ready for the next step? USA Wrestling challenges you to test your skills at the USA Wrestling Clifton Athletic Folkstyle Nationals. Become a national champion. Head to the Unidome in Cedar Falls, Iowa on April 5th and 6th to compete against the best wrestlers in the country. Last year's event featured 1,200 cadet and junior wrestlers from 32 states on 26 mats. For more information about this event and other tournaments, visit usawrestlingevents.com. Each season, Liberty Mutual's Responsible Sports Community Grant Program awards $65,000 to youth sports organizations and school sports programs that demonstrate their commitment to responsibility in youth sports. Your organization could be one of our 20 winners this season. It's easy. Simply visit ResponsibleSports.com and click on the Community Grant Program. Administrators register their organization with the program, then reach out to rally parents, coaches, and team supporters to log on and review either the Responsible Sports Parenting or Responsible Coaching Guide. Then complete the quiz and showcase your mastery of the concepts. Every successfully passed quiz is worth a point that you can credit to your favorite youth sports organization or school sports program. Connect with friends, family, and neighbors to rally more support. The teams and schools with the most points at the end of the grant period win. It's that simple. Watch the leaderboard throughout the grant season, then rally more of your supporters to increase your totals. Liberty Mutual is committed to celebrating and championing youth sports and to financially supporting organizations that demonstrate their commitment to responsible sports. Join the movement and start earning points toward your community grant. Well, this fall should be an exciting time for wrestling. A number of major events have been announced, sure to help promote and publicize the sport. Victory Fighting Championships, a successful company that develops and promotes MMA competitions, has created its very first Victory Wrestling Challenge. Well, the competition will feature freestyle and Greco-Roman wrestling and will be held on Friday, November 22nd in Omaha, Nebraska at the Ralston Arena. The event will feature star wrestlers from USA Wrestling and a portion of each ticket sold will be donated back to USA Wrestling. Local wrestling clubs will also be able to sell tickets as a fundraiser for their youth programs. The competition will be a homecoming for three USA Wrestling stars who have earned spots on past U.S. Senior World teams. I'll we'll start with the Paulson twins, Trent and Travis. They grew up in the shadow of Omaha in Council Bluffs, Iowa, just across the Missouri River. Both went to college at Iowa State and had outstanding careers there. Trent made the 2009 U.S. World Team, and Travis, well, he competed in the 2010 World Championships. Travis will square off against past NCAA champ from Missouri, Max Askren. 
Trent's opponent has yet to be determined. Les Sigmund, he won four NCAA Division II national titles for Nebraska Omaha and was a member of the 2010 U.S. World Team. He was also second in the 2012 Olympic Trials. He'll battle three-time NCAA All-American and talented freestyler Gerald Trice in that event. Local fans will also enjoy the Greco-Roman battle between NCAA Division II national champ Eastside Dominguez, who grew up locally there and went to UNO. He'll be battling a two-time world bronze medalist, Justin Lester. Man, what a battle that is scheduled to be. USA Wrestling's Director of Development, Larry Nugent, talked to us about this brand new and exciting competition. Our athletes are really professionals in, in many ways. They don't get enough opportunities to, to make money, to compete for a purse. You know, it's a great, great thing for our athletes and for our sport. Well, make sure to mark your calendar for November 22nd in Omaha to attend, if you can, well, the Victory Wrestling Challenge is a top-notch promotion, and I promise you it's going to be a great night of wrestling action. Join me there, won't you? Tickets are $25 for general admission or $750 bucks for a seated table of 10. Now, you can buy your tickets online at homepridetix.com. Well, with the start of the new international season, practices are already underway at the Olympic Training Center. We sent USA Wrestling's Richard Emmel down to the OTC this week to speak with some of the new athletes who are now full-time residents in Colorado Springs. The men's freestyle program includes a number of developmental athletes who are training in prior to the start of their college and international careers. One of the talented newcomers is 2013 Junior World Champ Kyle Snyder of Maryland. Snyder shocked the world when he won a junior world title this summer in Bulgaria at just 17 years old. Snyder's a high school senior this year, but will not be wrestling on the prep level, focusing entirely on training for freestyle. I've been looking up to some of these guys since I was a younger guy and younger kid wrestling, and now I'm training with them every day, and they're making me a lot better, a lot more aware of positions I wasn't uh, as good as I should have been in, and. Now I'm getting better at that with them, and it's, it's awesome. Another resident is big man Garrett Ryan of Arizona. He'll no doubt improve at the OTC. One of the key factors in me making the decision was the Ivy League schools don't offer you the option to take an athletic redshirt year. Then the other main part is there's really no other training environment like this anywhere. You have no other distractions. You just get to focus on making yourself a better wrestler every day. In women's freestyle, one of the new full-time residents, 2013 U.S. Open champ Brittany Roberts. She comes to the OTC after a very successful collegiate career at Oklahoma City University. I decided to move out here to further my wrestling and to get to the highest level and to you know, learn a lot of freestyle. I know Terry Steiner and all the coaches here um, know a lot about the sport and very passionate about it. And I just want to move out here and just learn everything they can teach me. One of the new Greco-Roman talents is heavyweight Jacob Mitchell of Oregon. Matt Lindley called me, he was just like trying to come up to this wrestling camp because I fought for him last summer. And I was like, yeah. And I came up here and like a couple days later they gave me residency and asked me if I wanted to stay. Well, last week we brought you the first five weight class pairings for the National Wrestling Coaches Association All-Star Classic that will take place November 2nd at George Mason. We've covered the athletes who will compete at 125, 41, 49, and 97 along with the heavyweight. Now it's time to take a look at the final five classes that will compete. Of course, a number of past NCAA champions are on the roster. 174 pounds past NCAA champ Andrew Howe. Howe will make his debut as a member of the Oklahoma Sooners at the All-Star Classic. He'll battle NCAA runner-up Matt Brown of Penn State. Howe won his NCAA title and three All-American honors for Wisconsin and will finish his college career as a senior for the Sooners. Howe also placed second at the Olympic trials, if you recall, while Brown was a key leader for Penn State's NCAA championship team just last season. At 184 pounds, the matchup there will feature two-time NCAA champ Ed Ruth of Penn State. He'll take on Maryland's All-American Jimmy Sheptock. Ruth was the Big Ten Wrestler of the Year last year and has twice beaten Sheptock in their only meetings. 2012 NCAA champ and Dan Hodge Trophy winner David Taylor will take on Iowa State's All-American Michael Moreno at 165. Taylor's a three-time NCAA finalist and will face Moreno for the very first time ever. Returning NCAA champ at 57, Derek St. John of Iowa will face nationally ranked Nestor Tafur of Boston University. St. John is the 74th Iowa wrestler to be featured in this event, while Tafur is the second from BU. Tafur's appearance should help boost Boston University's wrestling program, which is working very hard to change the school's decision to drop 
it from its athletic offering. Now, the final pairing will take place at 33. It's where Edinburgh's A.J. Shop will face Lehigh's Mason Beckman in their first ever college battle. The two did, however, battle earlier in their career while in high school in Pennsylvania. Well, the completed main event draw will feature 18 All-Americans with a combined 10 NCAA titles among them and 32 medals overall with three of the participants earning NCAA championships on two different occasions. On Friday, November 1, USA Wrestling will partner with the Wrestlers and Business Network to host the inaugural middle school all-star dual meet, also held at George Mason University. Top middle school athletes from eight different states are slated to compete in the event with athletes from the Beat the Streets program in both Baltimore and Philly. Stay tuned to this very program for more updates on these exciting events. Stay tuned. USA Wrestling continues. We'll be right back. There comes a point in your life that determines who you are, whether you will lead or follow, whether you will fight or give in, whether you will win or lose, and what you will count as your victory. Well, this month, USA Wrestling is doing a special recognition of some of the key events and activities that took place during our recent Keep Olympic Wrestling movement. On February 12th, the IOC Executive Board announced its recommendation to remove the sport from the Olympic Games. On September 8th in Buenos Aires, Argentina, the IOC General Assembly selected wrestling as an additional sport for the 2020 and 24 Olympics a major victory for the sport worldwide. Taking a look back at this historic time, USA Wrestling is posting their top 10 news stories from the Olympic fight. This week, we'll take you through the countdown starting at 10 through 6 with the top five news stories scheduled for next week's show. Coming at number 10 is the Battle at the Falls, the women's wrestling event held at Niagara Falls, Canada, May 30th. It featured teams from Canada, Ukraine, and the U.S. And the event was held on the last day of World Wrestling Month and showcased women's wrestling at its finest. And it was an amazing backdrop as well. Coming in at number nine was the United Four Wrestling event in L.A. on May 19th. It featured all-star athletes from the U.S., Russia, and Canada competing in men's and women's freestyle. Huge crowd gathered along with celebrities and media to see the new rules of wrestling for the very first time. Jordan Oliver of the U.S. won two bouts while Jordan Burroughs won another, and the youth exhibition bouts were just as exciting. The number eight news story was the social media charge of the wrestling community, which used online resources and technology to spread the Olympic wrestling movement and the message, and showed the IOC that the worldwide support of the sport is only growing. FILA, USA Wrestling, and CPOW grew their audiences on Facebook, Twitter, and websites for the cause. A big part of the success can be attributed to the weekly Google Plus Hangouts that USA Wrestling hosted with major international heroes who were available to the general public. The number seven story, the decision by the IOC Executive Committee to accept FILA's proposal to increase the number of weight classes for women to six starting at the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. The IOC had challenged FILA to show its commitment to the growth of opportunity for women, and this change was well received. Men's wrestling at the Olympics will drop to six weights for freestyle and Greco, while something FILA will be working hard to expand moving forward. Now, one of the major events internationally comes in at number six, the Olympia. 2013 tournament that was held on the site of the ancient Olympic Games in Olympia, Greece, took place July 21st. It was the first time that the hallowed grounds had been open for a modern sports event and the first time women had ever wrestled there. Now, the world media covered this event in large numbers, helping to showcase the sport, a foundational sport, by the way, in both the ancient and modern games. Tune in next week for the top five stories of the Olympic wrestling movement. Who's going to make it? Well, you need to tune in to find out. Well, sad news to report now out of Long Island, New York. Tom Hudson, a national accounts manager for TW Promotions, passed away last week in an automobile accident. He was only 28 years old and worked closely with USA Wrestling in many aspects of the ASICS sponsorship partnership. TW Promotions manages wrestling for ASICS and is a leader in the worldwide wrestling community. Hudson had worked two years for TW Promotion and was well-liked and respected for his work on behalf of the sport. Our thoughts and prayers are with the Hudson family, his friends, 
and coworkers. Well, it's time for our USA Wrestling Photo of the Week contest. The pictures are sent in by wrestling families and fans from around the country and are being considered for the photo contest page in USA Wrestler Magazine and our Facebook page. This week's picture was sent in by Eric Kreese, depicting novice wrestler Paxton Kreese of Apple Valley, Minnesota. Look at him throwing an opponent in a 60-pound bout at the Minnesota USA State Championships in May. That's what it's about. Have your photographs considered for our photo contest simply by emailing them to Gary Abbott at gabbott at usawrestling.org. Folks, that'll do it for this week's show. From all of us here at USA Wrestling, I'm Scott Casper, and thanks for watching.